um, been telling you about the loss of my youngest son due to hypertension and diabetes. The two oldest sons were thinking that I might have needed maybe um, some help, you know, with being with living alone. And I thought the same thing, Miss Lori, that you know, I wanted to be by myself and that I would be able to go through it. So I so I thought it was a good idea. In this episode, our guest opens up about her journey through grief after the devastating loss of her son. The way they handle me, they handle me like I'm some fragile piece of porcelain. If I go away for a couple of days, they blowing up my phone, wondering where I'm at, even though I already told them they want play by play well. Are you okay? Who you with? Where'd you go? I want them to stop handling me like that. The overwhelming attention from her family, though well-meaning, has left her feeling unease as she navigates this deeply personal process. Grief is unique to everyone, and today, we will explore how it impacts not just the individual, but also the dynamics within a family. So I noticed that with my mother's loss, I lost 50 pounds. Wow. The loss of my mother, right? Yeah. With the loss of my son, I've gained 26 pounds. We are back together um, after several sessions, but I think we had a gap because of a holiday. So uh, could you, um, let's review. And okay. So why don't you give me a summary um, of what's brought you here and your situation? Well, you know, I have um, been telling you about the loss of my youngest son um, due to hypertension and diabetes. And um, recently, um, the old, the two oldest sons were thinking that I, I might have needed maybe um, some help, you know, with being with living alone. And I thought the same thing, Miss Lori, that you know I wanted to be by myself, and that I would be able to go through it. So I so I thought it was a good idea. And I'm not saying it's not. It hasn't been. Um, rough it's 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 not it hasn't been easy but it hasn't been rough either because there's plenty of space it's not like anybody is over top of each other and i thought i really needed the company but i don't really i don't think that's what i needed hmm. and so i think my behaviors or maybe my my actions my son is feeling like either it's him because him and the youngest son actually look like they could have been twins. Mm -hmm. Only the middle one may be two inches shorter than the youngest one. But when you would look at them, you would have to look, take a double look before right. you could know who, which one was which. And so now that they are here, now that my son is here, he thinks that I'm avoiding him, but I'm not avoiding him, Miss Lori. I'm still grieving. Okay. Well, I don't know how to I don't know how to explain it to him, but except for I'm still grieving. And I'm trying to explain to him that people grieve differently. That's right. And you know, I even suggested to him because the three of them are so very very close. So I even suggested to him and his brother that they get a therapist but um the oldest one has he 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 went and got one but the one that i'm living with he's on the fence he's on the fence about it <clears throat> because he believes that i'm grieving harder because i was his, my son's mother but he's trying to get me to understand that he might be grieving harder right. than me because even though he was my son they all grew up together miss lori they are the youngest and the the youngest and the middle were 11 months apart and the mm -hmm. middle and the oldest were 18 months apart mm -hmm. so he's trying to explain to me that mom you might be grieving but I think we're grieving harder because 
we know we grew up together mom things that you think you knew we didn't tell you we shared with each other so you got to understand the what did he say the not he didn't say commit the bond the bond that the bond the bond that the three of them had and even though it, it may appear to you that i'm just moving on but mom i'm moving on but i might be moving on in a different way than you expected me to move on don't think that i don't think about my brother every single day just like i know you think about him every single day mom do you realize it's been a year and some change and you there's not one day you have not mentioned his name and i did not know that until he told me that miss lori hmm well i really appreciate that you're able to remember so much to give me some quotes um to be able to understand better what your son also is feeling that he told you directly yes you know uh and you um some of the things maybe that he didn't tell you directly you're assuming how he feels and things is that right yes okay so your insight um miss uh rita is really good around the fact that everybody grieves differently and what have you noticed in how your son and you are grieving in terms of similarities and differences what have i noticed mm -hmm. yeah because you said you, everybody grieves differently so how do you see yourself grieving compared to your son that's it lori i don't know if there's a i don't know what the difference is okay because i don't know what he does behind closed doors i don't know what he shares with his wife that you know he may not share with me because they the way they handle me they handle me like i'm some fragile piece of porcelain i mean if i go away for a couple of days they blowing up my phone wondering where i'm at even though i already told them they want play by play well are you okay who you with where'd you go and i want them to stop handling me like that okay they handle me like as if i'm going to break hmm the what would help you feel better can you well, I know that's why you're here to see me, so I don't expect you to have all the answers. But uh, if you close your eyes for just a second and take a deep breath, can you do that? Like we've done before with our breathing? Sure. Just do that for me a minute. Sure. Um, for me, for a minute, just a minute. Close your eyes, take a deep breath. Think about where you are right now. And I want you to imagine, you know, okay, what was yesterday like? What would you like to, tomorrow to be like? What would you like next year to be like? You were talking about it being a, a, you and your son about things being a year. So yesterday, tomorrow, and next year, you can open your eyes or, um, or keep them closed. It's up to you. Okay. So what do you have any idea how you can imagine? Well, you know what yesterday was like. So what was yesterday like? Yesterday was um woo, yesterday I was in a lot of pain yesterday cuz the day before yesterday I went on a a boat ride and mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much walking I was going to have to do to get to the boat and uh yesterday my legs hurt a lot so i spent the day uh watching tv i did uh uh uh, uh, uh i said bedside baptist where i saw a sermon on tv 
and um I just rest my body from yesterday from Saturday did you enjoy Saturday oh very much I really I enjoyed it a lot okay, um sure. I, that was the first time I went um down the Maryland Har Harbor I think that's what they called it all right so it sounds like what we've talked about is you trying to do some things for yourself and you got out yes and it's you not, enjoyed it's it. not, the issue is not me not going out and doing things that's not what the issue is i go out i do things i i i go places the problem is when i go somewhere these kids of mine act as if I'm going to break. I keep telling them I'm already broken. So mm -hmm. I can't break no more. The I'm already broken, that's quite a statement. So I'm going to hold on to that for a minute. Okay. Uh, I. We may come back to it. I want to be okay. able to help you with what you've told me you want help with. Okay. Uh, at the same time, I want to get, you know, you, talk, you talked about grief is something that's different for everybody and personal, but you don't yes. know exactly how it is for your son. When you lose someone, the we sometimes feel like we've lost that connection that was so important to us. And that loss can feel like a break. That's the word you're using. And we don't want to lose any more connections that are important to us. And so we hold on to them. We hold on to them tightly, but then it doesn't, you know, if we change the tenor of how those connections are, it might not feel quite right because, and that happens in a large family like yours. The, um, so I'm quite sure no matter how you grieve, whether it is through stopping to think and reflect a whole lot, or whether it's keeping busy, or whether it's talking it out, or whether it is doing specific things to try to remember that can, you know, the person that we lost. Whatever helps us feel more grounded and that we actually haven't totally lost that person because the connection of our memories and the spirit of that person is something we can hold on to forever. So getting there to say, I lost part, but not all, and I can move on the rest of me so I'm not totally broken, that takes a while and it could be a different path for everybody. So when you make decisions that you think are helpful, but then sometimes they get harder, mm -hmm. like getting everybody together, you think it's going to be helpful, but then there's a harder part to it. Uh -huh. You know, um, life is full of harder parts. So we'll work through it and you and i will work through it together and i'm sh there's a way that you and you, the rest of your family can work through it together right now they're worried about you because not because not you and not your other sons have to work through it all so when they hover too much and treat you like you're broken what do you think how how could you relate this to their kind of grief i, I don't think i understand your question can you okay you when your son told you he's grieving too 
and then you're um they get scared of something happening to you they don't want to lose you either so they're being a little bit bothered yeah i think i understand that too I know, I guess because I'm always saying, I don't need y'all to take care of me. I need you to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to take care of me. So I think, I don't know. I just don't, I mean, maybe it's because I'm not used to nobody taking care of me. Mm. That could be what's going on too. Because okay. I've always... I always been the one. Well, you've been the caretaker of a lot of people and you've been yeah. very independent. And I had to get them to understand that not only grieving my son, my mother died two years before him. So, and then two weeks before my son passed away, my ex-husband passed away. And even though we, we were exes, we were friends. Right. We talked on the phone almost every other day. We wasn't married anymore, but we was good friends. So all of that compiled. Sometimes I feel like I just got to get away. Yeah. This is your, in, you know, your insight of how this is all connected certainly is good but it's all jumbled up for you and how you can make it how you can learn to be at peace with all these intertwining things that are grief you mm -hmm. know it's um that's hard it's like a wave miss Lori. yeah it's like a you know how you ever been on the beach Mm -hmm. And then you're like standing there And you know if you get any, any closer The wave gonna take you it's Yeah that's like the undertow That's kind of hidden sometimes Yeah it's like a wave That comes, yeah. it comes in waves the, the grief I can be fine And then all of a sudden I'll just start crying And it's nobody I'm by myself Right. Then I'm okay I'll hear a song that my son loved. Yeah. And I'll laugh of the memory because he was a big comedian. Um, and I would laugh because he would, I, or of the song, how he would be doing with the song and um, emanating it and right. all the things. And then I would laugh because it's a reminder, but it's a happy reminder. I love the way you describe that. Um, I want to make sure that I don't miss things for you. So there's a, I, I just want to let you know, I'm taking notes of some of the things that we may have to come back to. I'm not forgetting. You're fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And the, you know, you're making progress in your grief journey because you can laugh about some things. And when you can remember the loss with more than sadness, but also some of the happy parts of what you're glad to have known the person with. And of course your son or your mom or your ex-husband, you know, they all, you know, the, you know, it compounds the grief and one person's loss reminds you of the other. But when you can remember with happiness at the same time as the sadness, you're making progress. Can so, Miss Lori, can I share something else with you that I noticed? Sure. So, I noticed that with my mother's loss, I lost 50 pounds. Wow. The loss of my mother, right? Yeah. With the loss of my son, I've gained 26 pounds. That's a really interesting observation. I, and I said that because I'm like, I'm on a diet. How do I gain 26 pounds on a diet? 
but then I re- I said I remember when I lost my mother the my whole it was everything was different yeah it 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 was almost like I was there when she took her last breath I took care of her um the the 3 months prior to her passing it was almost like watching a movie yeah like I was doing everything that I you know going I had to do all of this <coughs> excuse me without the help of anybody I have one sibling my brother and he was no help at all he was helping the beginning he would took care of her 3 months before I got to her yeah. but as soon as I came he went back to DC and he just he didn't I didn't hear no more from him until mm-hmm. my mother passed so I had to understand him too. So he's like, I don't want the coffin open. I had to make sure he was all right. Cause he's the youngest brother, my youngest brother. And I had to make sure I was all right too. So I made sure she looked absolutely who she was. I had to do all of this. So you and took really, over a lot from your brother. Yeah. I lost, I, I gained, I, I lost a lot of, I lost 50 pounds with my mother, but with my son, I gained 25, 26 pounds. So I, 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 I journaled about that yeah. because, you know, I wanted to monitor it because I felt that I found that to be weird. I'm like, it's both of them are, are, are great losses for me. Right. But the reactions are totally different. Well, of course, they're different people, and this is a different time. Mm-hmm. And uh, COVID was going on too when my mother passed. So, yeah, the you. What I've noticed, you know, you've been working hard to notice things, which is, you know, a good, a good thing. What I've noticed from what you tell me is that when your mother passed you were in charge and taking care of a lot of people. You know, you were taking care of things for your mom. You were worried about your brother. You didn't have, and you want to be able to take care of yourself. And that's what you normally do, but you take care of yourself by taking care of others. So you didn't really have a whole lot of time to take care of yourself when your mother passed, which meant you were not taking care of your eating. So you lost a lot of weight because you weren't taking care of your eating. You were taking care of everybody else. When your son died, now you got your other son living with you with some more family. They want to take care of you and you have, you're having a hard time with them wanting to take care of you. You thought you might need it, but you don't know how to handle having this reversal. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, I'm not used to anybody taking care of me. Yeah. Even even, um, even to the point, I guess maybe I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest? Of course. I think I had a little resentment against my daughter-in-law, the what my the, the new one, because I'm not used to nobody taking care of me, and she's cooking dinner and making breakfast and doing all this stuff, and I'm not used to that. And I think I caught a little resentment. I was like, "What's she doing? Trying to take over?" Yeah. And my oldest son said, "Mommy, that's just you. You just used to being. You just used to doing everything." Mm-hmm. Sit back and let somebody do for you for a change. Uh, I can see how that might trigger that feeling of being treated like you're not so competent anymore. Yeah, I think that's where it comes from. I'm definitely competent. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely. Can- I may have. I may have my challenges because of my my back, but I do everything for myself. But it's not, maybe I'm, I gotta get, I'm not comfortable with being taken care of. 
right. maybe I gotta lean in a little bit and relax a little bit and see what it's like to have somebody take care of me. I think that would be great. I don't I, just don't know how. That's the part. Well, if you get some of your feelings out, which you're doing, you're say you're trying to come to terms with what your feelings are, like you said you're feeling some resentment. Well, that's natural. Yeah, that's back to how everybody grieves differently. And then it can trigger all different kinds of feelings. So at resentment, it's resentment is kind of on the same continuum as anger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a milder version. So it's like you're holding back and because of your own values, you don't want to be angry. But you're being honest with yourself that you have some resentment. I think maybe you're also pushing down some feelings of guilt. Guilt? Yeah. When you think about your son dying and you're the mom, what's going on in your head? I don't know. I don't know about guilt, Miss Lori, because uh, he was forty something years old. Okay, so, so he was, he was grown. A, a, a adult man. It's not like he was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know. Um, I can't make decisions for my adult children. They make their own decisions, and um, I, I don't think there's any guilt. Okay. I know. Okay, so what other feelings might there be that get triggered or you get reminded of? Um, oh, I can tell you this. So the four-year-old brings me such joy. Oh, that's wonderful. He is, I think, the sunshine that I needed because she will run in, she'll run, run in, run to my room. When she sees me in my room, she'll run to my room. And she says, can I, can I stay in here with you for a little while? And that makes me so happy. So, uh, yeah, that's joy. And she brings me a lot of joy. Yeah. Okay. I like that she does. And I like that you, when you, when you get triggered or reminded, whatever word we use about your son with the music, that you're able to smile, um, about some of the th music he liked and his, some of maybe the sense of humor stuff mm -hmm. you know that you said so that's another you know we can get reminded in our grief in both a sad way and a happy way yeah um so the i think that that's really good i want to um come back to because i'm seeing the time for a session and okay. I would never want to cut off in a negative spot because I want you to feel really hopeful and feel like you got something out of the session so I want to come back to what you're asking about which is how do you handle these new feelings of maybe it's not exactly right but you thought it was right and for dealing with the present it is what it is your other son is with you you got family with you and mm -hmm. you want to get more independent you want to recognize it you know what your son says that he also may be grieving so what do you do that's kind of what your question was is that right my question i guess what I what I'm asking is how do or what can I do mm -hmm. what can I do to let them know I'm that I appreciate them okay. it's not a but though I appreciate them period Wonderful. However, however, 
I don't want to be treated. It's almost like the roles have reversed. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. how when your kids, do you have children, Ms. Lori? Yes, I do. So you know how when your children were small and, well, not real small, but like if they was wanting to go to their friend house and you say, okay, where does he live? I don't think, I don't think you can go because I haven't met their mother or father. Right. Um, or what time will you be back? Um, who are you going with? Those are now questions they ask me. Right. And, and then, I can see the reversal. And then I'll be like, but who they think they talking to? But then I might. Well, it's not nothing wrong with being accountable. Right. But I still want to feel like the mother. You will always be the mother. Um, and you asked me um, if I have kids. And, you know, the counseling is for you. Not for me to say, oh, I got triggered. Listen to me. <laughs> But I do want you to know that I can relate to the sense of loss, to the sense of reversal. You know, um, because I have, I've lost siblings. I've lost my parents. Um, and it's the, um, so that's also a natural reaction sometimes for kids mm -hmm. to worry about their parents. And the, especially because of all the losses in your family. Mm. So when you say, what can you do to express this to them? Mm -hmm. I think you, in a way you've answered your own question because you've expressed it so well to me. It's a mat and you've journaled it. It's a matter of the communication, but communication is a two way street. There's the sender of the message and the receiver. So you, your family is going to be ready to hear and receive the message in their way, in their time. So what you can do is make sure you give the message. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're going to receive it right away. Mm -hmm. And because they're living with you, you know, you recommended therapy for them. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the household and we're doing this over video. Um, do you think that you can say, hey, my therapist wants to get your perspective on how I'm doing to be able to help me better. And you know, if he's kind of reluctant, are you willing to meet my therapist? You know, it's just online. Okay. You know, so we could do that. And then I can slowly kind of get them warmed up to the idea of therapy too. And if needed, I might be able to be an in-between person to make sure that the messages that are important go both ways what do you think about that i think that's a wonderful idea okay mm -hmm. all right miss rita i am glad for your progress be patient with yourself and you. you let me know about you know meeting some of the rest of the family Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate you. I'll see you next week. Yeah. See you next week. Thank you.